My name is Audrey. And my name is Sean. And in today's episode, we are answering a fun question. Yes. Woo! Okay. Did that sound nice? Woo! No? Okay. So, sorry. Okay. My bad. Okay. All right. Ready? Ready. How to stand up to your African parents on issues that aren't as serious as they make them. Oh, God. I.E. Piercings and tattoos. Uh, <laughs> it's just a matter of time before we got all, this question. For all sure. this, this hairstyle. Yes, yes, yes. Ah, you've lost your way. <laughs> You're lost. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> You're wearing dada. Is this dada? What is this? Who told you that grown men wear hairstyles like this? You're not, you're not even ashamed of yourself. Your parents do not. Your parents do so, so. So I think we were in. The Bahamas, we were in the Bahamas, and we met this Nigerian couple, older, so maybe like our parents' age. They were. They were not that old. I mean, they were like early fifties. That's your parents' age. My parents are sixties. No? Okay. Yeah. I guess it's the same. Same. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. And yeah, we told them we're Nigerian. They're like, there's no way you're Nigerian because you have lost your way. And I'm like, oh God. Okay, you're telling the story in <laughs> such a fun way. Let me tell you what happened. <laughs> what happened was. Okay. So we're, first of all, we're in the Bahamas for a little bit or whatever and we got mm. stuck, right? So you have to set the tone because. We already got stuck. There was like a hurricane or something, something, something. Yeah. I don't know. But then they were like, okay, you have to stay an additional couple of days or whatever. And so everybody's kind of like wanting to get home already, right? Oh, I found my ponytail. <laughs> okay. So anyways, everybody's already trying to get home. People are going to think I have like ADHD or something, you know, because I just like all over the place. But we're already trying to get home. I always come back to my main point though. Yeah. Sense. Um, and so we're getting on the bus that came to the hotel to pick everybody up or whatever. And then... Uh, one of the couples that were there uh, were a Nigerian couple. <clears throat> and so, anyways, um, I don't know if he was talking to his wife he or was, something. He, he, he was saying something. He was speaking in Nigerian language. Yeah. yeah. And I, I think like, oh, he was saying something. Yeah. And I was like, oh, you guys are Nigerian? So, I, yeah, of course, me, that doesn't, I just mind my own business. I was like, you guys are Nigerian? <laughs> in that tone. <laughs> and they're like, yes. <laughs> like, <laughs> Yes. Like, almost like, who's asking? <laughs> you know? We're like, oh, we're Nigerians too. No, you're not. <laughs> With that hair. And they're pointing to him because I, mine was bald. <laughs> Even worse. Was, but she was bald too, so we bonded because she cut her hair low too. So we bonded over the, uh, me, I was bald. He, 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 had, he had this and stuff. And so the husband was like, no, that's Nigerian. How can you have... How can you be doing hair like this that you're Nigerian? Anyways, they got to know us a little bit or whatever. I have never, actually maybe I have, but I was so insulted on that trip. I came home and really thought about my life. She was like, ah, you're a pretty gay. If you just lose weight, you will. <laughs> and honestly, I was feeling so good because I had lost weight. <laughs> This is so pretty. If you just lose, ah, you have to reduce. Reduce it. And this is prior to me even. No, the boys were really little. The boys were little. But I'm like, dude, you don't. You can you mind your business? You don't even know what my situation is. I felt like I was I was small. I don't know. But anyways, we digress. How did we get here? I don't know. I'm not even sure. Anyways, tattoos. But, oh, it was tattoos and, and piercings. <laughs> tattoos. And, but at the time, I didn't have these piercings. I remember when we went to Nigeria the second time, though. I did. That's when I just got in my oh, ears pierced, yeah. and I got the whole thing. So I have like eight piercings in each ear, and I literally had earrings in all of them. It was kind of intentional because I can't take them out. I just got them pierced. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, I just got them pierced. I'm going to wear an earring in every single one. And so that's literally what happened. And everywhere we went to, it was a point of contention. I felt like everyone was like staring at me at that time. Yeah. But now I see them on Instagram and I'm like, oh, y'all got tattoos? Yeah. They, the the dreads, it yeah. makes me happy though. I think it probably is not as strange. stringent. 
yeah as before okay so how to stand up to african parents on issues but i do think that african parents in america that i've noticed are more strict yes about these tendencies than i've seen on social media of the kids that are in nigeria because it just feels that way to me i don't know if i'm wrong but like um okay I've, I've intervened in too many of these where they're like, can you believe he braided his hair? It's just hair. Yeah. yeah, I'm like, it's just hair. Okay, so, but if you're a young adult, if you're a young adult and you're trying to do these, what would you say? Let me ask the question one more time because I'm just all over the place. Okay, how to stand up to an African parent on issues that aren't as serious as they make them? How would you do that? How would you stand up to them? Well, so... Well, you're asking the wrong person first of all. Okay. So here's here's the thing, right? If you're a young adult, right, what your goal and your focus should be is really being independent, right? If you live in your parents' house and you want to stand up to them, that's an oxymoron. That doesn't make sense. Why are you standing up to them? They're your parents. You live in their house, so you do what they expect of you. If you want to be an adult, go to your own place and then start doing your own rules that's my opinion okay so you're an adult you live outside the home you get attacked ooh and then you come home and it's an issue well what's the issue you already got the tattoo they're upset about it yes <clears throat> they didn't expect that of you because of how you were raised blah 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 but Sometimes there's they're your parents. You should know how to here's here's something that I think young adults should always highlight. Highlight what you're doing, the responsible things that you're doing now. And I've talked to a lot of these parents, the parents that care about those things. What they end up saying is, but at least then God is responsible. Yeah. They end up with that, right? Because but if you're really not responsible, you're not taking care of the things that you should take care of and that's what you're doing, for them it seems like the reason you're not being responsible is because, because of all this distraction. things. Yeah, that's true because one of the things that they say is, I don't want this to interfere with their success. Like, yeah. how will they be perceived by other people? Or like, they have so many fears around like, okay, but if he braids his hair, then he'll be looked at as this. Or like, if he does this, or if she does this, then people will not take you seriously. How will you get that job? You know what I mean? I think so, it, their, their concerns are valid because of like where they're coming from. So you can't really negate the fact that like, that's what they're concerned for. They actually want what's best for you. And so I wouldn't even like, I wouldn't even question that. They're just looking out for you. At least they're feeling like they're looking out for you, right? But I, you would think that I would have a different opinion. I don't. I think that you should at no point in time, I don't stir up drama. That's, that's my thing. Like with my, like if I'm in my parents' household, I'm not stirring up drama for you. Like honestly, I just give up. I'm like, okay, they're not going to let me do it. When I get out, I'll do what I got to do. That's honestly the truth is like, do it when you get out. And if you're out and you do it and you come home and then they're asking you questions, like, why is it bothering you so? I'm an adult. I did what I did. And I, I accept full responsibility for the things that I've done or whatever. And then you just keep it stepping. Obviously, you're not going to be disrespectful about it. Like, right. mom, you play over it. I think African parents, yeah, you just yeah. play with them like, mom, it's not that deep. Yeah. Like, it's your not. Parents, you mom, know it's fine. Them, yeah. Do you want food? Are you hungry? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you just play with them. And like, yeah, they'll forget about it. Actually, no, they won't. But <laughs> <laughs> no, it's kind of like there's sometimes that you I can tell my outfits are really like bothering my dad. Like he's like, hmm, that's what you're gonna wear. Is that what you're choosing to wear to where we're going? <laughs> I said, yep. <laughs> I'm a grown person. I got a whole husband. If he got issues, they let me know. Like, dude, but like, I'm gonna wear what I wanna wear. Like, or like, my mom was like. Your whole ear, the whole thing. I said, "Yeah, isn't it nice?" <laughs> but, but in fairness, I remember that conversation. She's like, "So, what does your husband think of you?" Like, well, he helped me pierce them, and then she's she gets yeah, she, yeah, she then she was calm about it. She so. she was calm about it. But like, I think I honestly think that for them, it's so, it's so out of the norm that it freaks them out. But the the truth is, 
I think our parents are really cute because like sometimes lack of exposure right. can be like can show up as fear, yeah. right? But all you need is a li- to shine a little light of knowledge there, and you get to finding out that like, dude, my dad had a whole fro when he was younger. Yeah. What's the real issue with big hair? Like, dude, you had a whole fro when you were younger. Like, I think it's actually nice to get to know your parents because when you get to know them, you're like, oh, you wanted to wear your hair like that. That's cool. But you couldn't because society said cut it. Do you get what I'm saying? So I think. It's nice to get to know it, like, yeah. you know, and stuff. And obviously they have the, they'll bring the scriptural teaching from Deuteronomy. Is it Deuteronomy that talks about tattoos? <laughs> yeah, they'll bring up a scripture for sure, right? And then you can say, but Jesus got one too. But Jesus got a tattoo. Yeah. And so he's pierced forever. Yep. <laughs> like, he got a piercing and everything. So um, that's, that's. That's it. I don't think there's anything else. Um, I guess we can write down independence because I think from there we can talk about like independence, I guess. Yes, right? Yes. I think a lot a lot of the issues with between African parents and kids stare from independence, right? Yeah. It's this and, and and I call it this the cycle of life. This is literally right. When'd you coin this term? Hey. It's my word. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. The yes. cycle of life. The cycle of right? Life. When you start feeling like the parents have too many rules, that's life telling you you need to be on your own. No. 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 Because these children being raised these days, they feel like they have kahunas. They feel too grown. No. Are you talking about the teenagers? I'm talking about the teenagers. Okay, so again, so you have to specify. So let no, let me re, let me say that again. Rephrase. Let's it. say that again, right? Mm-hmm. And let's, let's break it down. Break it down. Teens. Run it back. If you feel like your parents have too many rules, that's life telling you you need to start being on your own. Now you need to ask yourself the question: If you're 15 year old, who who already feels like your parents have too many rules, and you want to be on your own? Okay, so how do you go about that process? And if you can't figure it out, it means you're not ready, right? Are you kidding? So you can't say that because <laughs> they're bold children. Just because some of us were not bold like that, they're bold children who will figure it out. I mean, they are getting on they a bus. They end up on the streets. Okay. They end up homeless. Yes, but they'll they at least attempt it. But they will at least attempt it. That's what I'm trying to tell you. That's not what being on your own means. Yeah, but you're- they don't care. That that need for like. I don't have to listen to you. That American rebellious spirit. See, I've joined your parents. I got you. <laughs> that nonsense rebellious spirit. I just rises in them. We cast it down. Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Can I join you. Yeah. <laughs> no, don't join me. Don't join me this time. We have on the parent side. But like, honestly, I think that a child that really just feels like, okay, I'm tired. Damn, bold. You don't think our middle child would try that crap? Well, well, here's the thing, right? Going on your own doesn't even nest, doesn't mean that you're now because your parents still have wisdom and advice experiences that would still help you out. So you don't want to go on your own and then cut ties with your parents. No, that's not how it's meant to be. Well, I don't right? think I don't so, think that we I don't think that society really pushes that, right? It's I think we're at a time in our society. I don't speak for America. I don't know where the other people are doing, but specifically in America, we've gotten to a point in our society where it almost feels like people feel like they can do away with the elderly or do away with wisdom or do away with guidance. It's not true. Not in this very life that we're living. Like, no. There's no way you're going to live your life and not like have guidance. Like, Where are you going? And not have wisdom? What are you doing? What devil is possessing you? Like, you need your parents. You need their voice. And you know what the funniest thing is? If you look, if you actually look at how God orchestrated things, your parents have the blueprint for your life to a certain extent because they know who you are. They do. Your parents saw it from the time that you were little. They can see, like, trajectories, right? Of course, sometimes I think as parents, you're kind of hoping that you can 
bend. Like, can I just yeah. throw you in the other direction, you know, and stuff. But parents know your strong suit, what you're strongly suited for, what your your quirks. They know all of that, those things. And so, if you now say, okay, I'm presenting my case like this. This is what I want. They're able to help you actually, like, okay. All right, I see that that's what you want. As after some parents have gotten over themselves, but for yeah. reason, let's talk about reasonable parents. Let's take reasonable parents. But like they're able to now guide you along the way that you should go, or like they'll say, "Well, maybe I don't understand what you're trying to do, or whatever, and stuff like that." But I wish you well. I think that goes a long way. Yeah. Then like when you're out there, you're hustling, you're doing all these things, and in the back of your head, you're like, "Ah, my parents don't even like care." Or I have nobody because I'm really hustling. I think that's super frustrating. It is. That's not the ideal situation at all. Yeah. No, it's... It, it, and we think, well, the Bible even says it's one would chase, chase out a thousand. a thousand and two would do to ten chase thousand. ten thousand, right? Mm -hmm. And that's, that's just, just the support. And the support you can count on every day is support of your parents. Even when they don't agree with you. Yeah. They always wish you well. Now... When you now reconcile and understand that they are wishing you well in this moment, when those th thoughts come through, you're like, no. You can counter it. You can counter it. No, my dad's got my back. My mom's got my back. Like, yeah. Right? You, you know that, right? Yeah. So, so there's really no need to have these. And I think maybe that's a big thing, which is probably what we're going to really talk about a lot in a lot of these episodes is there is really no need to have differences be so big that it's that it scatters everything you know what i mean yeah and then now you're out here always feeling like nobody cares about me yeah and that's really the issue that's dangerous that's dangerous and that's that's really what's preventing a lot of these kids from achieving their potential or even trying yeah because some of them will feel like well i'm here by myself nobody cares about me what's, what's the, the point, point? It was the point. Yeah. yeah, and I think I think I've met a lot of young people that are from African households that struggle along those lines where they just feel like they're kinda on their own. And like even when they are in in community, yeah. they also feel like they're very much on their own and they have to figure things out on, on their, their own. own. That's a really horrible place to be. I think that like if you can mend situations to the best of your ability, of course we're living in a trauma informed culture or whatever now, and everybody's like, oh, I'm gonna cut everybody off. No, you can't. You don't exist. You cannot exist as an island. You're going to need people, and people are flawed. Fundamentally, people are flawed. So yeah, you can meet a person and they have so much good, but then you also find the irritating in them as well. And I think yeah. it's time that we all learn yeah. that like yeah, people have to deal with your irritations. You got to deal with other people's irritations as well. And there's ways to manage those or there's ways around those. And yes, maybe you don't have to be around the person 100% of the time. No one's requiring that of you. But relationships are very important for success. Yes. For success. It's very important. So I think we've come to the end of this video. Mm -hmm. um, we do have several other questions to answer. And so we will see you in the next, 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 next. What did I say? Next. We will see you in the next episode. Oh, there's one more thing I have to say. Actually. Oh, yeah, that's true. Right? I mean, this can be a template or just along these lines. If you're having maybe one of these difficult conversations with your parents and where you guys in their career, you can literally say that. I love you, mom and dad, or I love you, dad. I respect you. But on this issue, we do not agree. I hope in time, we will get to understand each other's perspective better so we can understand each other and move on, right? It doesn't have to you be... You sandwich it? Basically, it doesn't have to be get out of my life and you're cut off and just because of a tattoo or, you know, so... Oh, ooh, ooh, that brings up a really, really good one. I, I, I've spoken to so many parents and I feel like whenever kids or young people bring up issues or want to talk about their feelings, they feel attacked. Yeah. Right? And that's why I said, do you sandwich it? Because I find that, like, if you sandwich it, it feels better for African parents. Like, okay, so like you said, um, I really love that you love me, blah, blah, blah. I don't even know what you said. I don't remember. Like, <laughs> 
you just said it, but I'm like, okay, what did you do? I love the lines. Yes, I love, I love that you love me, you know, and stuff, but we disagree, right? On so, this issue. yeah, and then you have to come back, right, and say something sweet again. Because if you end it on that, if you end right. it with like that, that. Yeah, yeah, if you end it with that negative, my God, <laughs> they will never speak to you again. Mm -hmm. So you have to, like, you start with the praise. You say the constructive criticism or whatever, right. the, the, the things that you disagree on, but then you have to circle it back and then say a praise again. So you want to end it off with them on a high. You want to end it off on a high. I can never live without you. You know, stuff like, like are you kidding? Mom, what would I do? Yeah. Like, you're just like, oh my God, Dad, what would I do without you? You just love me too much. Yeah. I love you because you love me too much. Like, end it there. Oh my God, at the supermarket, everybody knows, oh, <laughs> Tiffany <laughs> loves his mommy so much. <laughs> Like everybody will know your name, but so it's sandwiched. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah. yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. Okay. All right. We will see you guys in the next episode. Uh, stay tuned. If you guys have questions, make sure that you are reading in the uh, the information in the description box below. That way, you can send in your questions as well. Um, it helps if there are a variety of questions. That way, we're touching on like different topics. And yeah, and and also. If you would like, if you are a person that would like to have conversations with us as well, yes, let us know. Like that would be fun, don't yeah. you think? Yeah, different yeah. perspective. A different yeah. perspective, a different viewpoint. Obviously, these videos are like generalized, yes. right? We're not saying that all parents are the same. We're not saying that there aren't awful parents. Absolutely, there, there are some parents that are really awful, and there are some parents that are like way too good, they're not even in here. You know what I mean? But most parents are doing the best that they can, they're doing all they know how to, yeah. And you have to respect it, that's just it, anyways. All right, talk to you guys later. Bye.